Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Brie if you are new here and in today's video I want to chat about my 2022 makeup favorites. It is January It's a new year and this is a perfect time to talk about the makeup that I loved last year So I have a decent amount of stuff to talk about today. So let's just Get started shall we so I already like photographed my thumbnail so I kind of have it all just like messily piled on this table over here so I'm just gonna kind of grab and grab grab and go this isn't in any particular order or anything like that um, it's just a bunch of makeup that I tried throughout the year that really stood out to me as being the best makeup of the year for me personally so first things first I'm gonna grab this one because it is blinding me this is the NARS bronzing cream and this one is in the shade Laguna 2 which is it says that's the original shade, but that's the shade right there. This is just such a beautiful bronzer. It's got a beautiful tone to it. Just the right amount of warmth, but also not so incredibly warm that it's like overpowering. It's got a little bit of a glow to it, but it kind of almost feels like powder once it starts to set down. It blends so incredibly easily. It's just a beautiful bronzer that I really enjoy. And it's got the perfect amount of pigment that you don't have to use like a ton. It's uh, gonna last you a very, very, very long time because you, you need so little. Next up is, this is definitely a newer product to me. I think I got it in what, October or November or something like that, but it's one of those things that's like, I would be mad at myself if I didn't mention this product because I use it almost every single day and that is the e.l.f. Halo Glow Liquid Filter. So I have here the shade 1 in Fair. I also have shade 2 which I believe is Fair Light um, but that one's in my project pan because like I said I use it every day so I was like why not play around with them both. But this is kind of e.l.f.'s version of the Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood Flawless Filter for a youth, Superstar Youth Glow. But it's just like a nice glowy product. Um, and I, I don't want to shoehorn it into it's a highlighter or anything like that because it has so many uses to it. And it's just a beautiful product. My personal favorite way to use this product is effectively as a primer. I will use it as an all over primer sometimes, but I do love to use it to prime my under eyes and it just kind of corrects my under eyes a little bit. It adds a good amount of moisture. It adds this kind of reflecting glow that kind of counteracts the darkness going on underneath my eyes as well. And it's just a beautiful product. Um, you could also use this as a liquid highlight. You could use it as um, mixed in with your foundation. There's a ton of different ways to use this product. It's perfect. It's a perfect product in my opinion and I'm so happy that that e.l.f. launched it. I love the packaging as well. It's got like a it's like a hefty glass container. Next up is an everyday product for me and it's so funny because I had written out my 2022 favorites. I kind of like went through like all of my hauls and my speed reviews and like my current favorites from the past year to kind of like gather up what, hey, what was it that I got this year versus what was already in my collection kind of thing. And somehow up until just now, this didn't make the list and I don't know how it didn't make the list. I even had to look to make sure that like it wasn't mentioned last year. But I, again, it's another one of those things that's like, I would be mad at myself if I didn't mention this. This is the Makeup Revolution Eye Bright Corrector. I have the shade Light to Medium. This is, in my opinion, a perfect dupe for the Becca Under Eye Brightening Corrector. It is the same two tones that were originally launched. Now I will admit the Smashbox relaunch of them is does have more shades. So if you're someone who needs deeper shades, then I would recommend that one over this one. But if you're someone who can use one of the two corrector shades that was from the original Becca launch, get this instead of the Smashbox one. You get 
so much product. When I say I have used this every, almost every single day for probably, I want to say eight months and I have barely made a dent in this. And look at how much product you get. Like you get an insane amount of product, super affordable, super easy to blend, super easy to apply. It does a great job at correcting. I love it so much. I just take like a denser brush and I just bounce it in there and then bounce it on underneath my eyes because it's a little bit hard to get your finger in there, especially if you're wearing nails. Not that I'm wearing nails right now, but like it's, it's a pretty deep container. Um, but overall, probably in my opinion, one of the best products that Makeup Revolution has ever put out. All right, next up is a product that I'm actually currently wearing on my face, and that is the Maybelline Superstay Vinyl Ink. I have on the shade Cheeky right now. So this is a beautiful product. You shake it up really, really well. It applies like a liquid lipstick. It lasts, honestly, in my opinion, better than a liquid lipstick, but it's not nearly as drying. It keeps that kind of like shine to it but holy fuck if this is not one of the most longest lasting lip products i have ever encountered i remember when i first tried it i put it on right before i left for work it was probably i don't know maybe 10 30 11 o'clock in the morning i got home and got ready to take a shower at like 7 30 at night and it was still on my lips perfectly so at that point i think it was this shade actually that i had had or maybe it was the peachy shade, I'm not sure. It was one of the two like more neutral ones. At that point, I was like, I need so many more of these. So I actually ended up picking up this shade right here, which is Red Hot, which is this one right here. And I wore it to work again, because why not? It's like quite literally all I do besides film. And I wore it to work. I remember I ate like, I want to say it was like cheese fries or something like that. Like it was a greasy meal for lunch. And it was so like, it had come off a little bit like in the center of my lips. Again, I was eating something greasy. That's to be expected, right? So it had come off a little bit. And now typically with like matte liquid lipsticks, you, you kind of sort of need to like wipe it off and start over again or else it gets like really thick and gross and not cute so I just gave it a shot and see what would happen if I just like applied it right over it and it applied over it it didn't get thick or cakey or gross or nasty it just applied like I had just put it on fresh clean lips it was perfect one of the great things about this too is like yes it sits down and it is virtually transfer proof but it keeps this like almost slightly emollient consistency to it where like you can kind of rub your lips together if you need to like kind of maybe you know you creased in the like see I had these two creases right here maybe like product is kind of shifting around a little bit weird right there you can kind of like shift it back into place it's really really cool so let me show you these swatches really quick the only one I didn't swatch is cheeky because well you have a giant one on my lips right now but this shade right here is the shade peachy next to it the cooler toned one is the shade witty next up is the shade extra and then right next to that this one right here is restless down here i have the shade charged and then once again this shade right here is the shade red hot so hands down beautiful product applies super evenly no streaks no grossness even like the really really dark shades apply perfectly like it's a magical formula honestly i went to go actually put those ones away because they were taking up so much space and i was like hey this should also be in here so now i've just added another thing to my pile of things to talk about <laughs> next up i don't have all of them over here next to me because i don't feel like digging them out but next up i have the stila glisten and glow liquid shadow so this one right here is in the shade brook which is actually the very first shade that i picked up originally but this was a new product launch for stila this year like they had been kind of quiet for a while but it's such a cool formula 
So it's a lot thinner than the glitter and glows. And you can kind of like blend it out and get this really like kind of just soft sheen to it. It's kind of almost got like a sheer base to it. At least this one does. The other ones have a little bit more of a pigmented base. Or you could really start to build it up and get like good, 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 good pigment out of it. But they're really cool in that they all have like a ton of reflect and glitter in them and like multicolor glitter but it's a a lot smaller and a lot finer of a glitter than it is in the glistening the, the glittering glows so they just sit on the eyes a little bit easier they're not as like thick as the other ones are and also i've noticed um some sort of improvement that they made must have made to this formula because my stila glitter and glows dry out so fucking fast this has lasted me i want to say probably like six or seven months and it's still in perfect condition so i love that because i remember i used to get the little teeny tiny versions of the glitter and glows and I still wouldn't even be able to finish that up before it dried out. So I love that it's, knock on wood, staying good, like, consistency for now. These are the About Face Line Artist Liners. So I wear the black very often, like, almost every single day. I have it on my upper and lower water lines right now. These liners are so fucking good. <laughs> They apply so easily. Like, let me pick not the black one because the black one's running out on me. So I have this beautiful blue one right here, which is Sad Girl. And literally just so easy. So creamy, so easy, beautifully pigmented. They're gel in the sense that when you first apply it, if you do it like on your actual lid for like a wing or something like that, you have a couple minutes to start working it out and kind of blending it out, right? And then it sets down and it does not go anywhere. So I could literally, and I've done it before on camera, I could take, say for example, we're using this one. I like to line my upper waterline with black because it just makes my lashes look fuller. So I could literally take the black one, apply it to my upper waterline, give it a second, obviously let it set down, and then I could go in on my lower lash line with this blue, and they will not cross. They will not blend together. The blue will stay on the bottom, the black will stay on the top. You will not see them blending together. I think that that is amazing and so hard to find because sometimes I don't even want a a liner on my lower lash line so I'll put the black on the top and then I can not have anything on the lower lash line and it doesn't transfer down which is really cool next up is a product that I'm not gonna swatch just because technically it's a backup because I have a Too Faced one out right now but this is the essence what the fake extreme plumping lip filler gloss this is so spicy so for example I We'll go back and forth between using the Too Faced one or this one. Um, but I like to put on like a plumping lip gloss while I'm doing my eye makeup and then I'll wipe it off before I put on my foundation and stuff like that. I feel like it just gives my lips like a little bit of extra hydration, a little bit of plumping, a little nice pizzazz, you know, like that. The Too Faced one stings in a different way. I don't know what's in that one, but it feels different. That one makes my lips feel like it's vibrating. This one feels like I made out with like a Carolina Reaper. It gets spicy. And so I'm, I'm letting you know that right now. Like if you're not a spicy lip gloss wearer, if you don't like that, then definitely stay far away from this. But if you're fine with a little bit of spice and you want a really good plumping lip gloss, this is the one. It plumps your lips so beautifully. And the spice doesn't last a super long time. And it does leave behind this kind of like sheer pinky reddy lip color behind. It's good. It's really good. It's just really spicy and it'll catch you off guard the first time you put it on. But once you get used to it, the only thing is that I feel like I, by the time I finished that first tube of the Essence one, 
it kind of started to feel like my lips were getting used to it. So I've kind of put myself on a on a system where I use the Essence one and then I use a Too Faced one and then I use an Essence one and then I use a Too Faced one because the same thing will happen with the Too Faced one where I like my lips will kind of get used to whatever ingredient it is it's supposed to be plumping. So I just kind of flip off back and forth. All right, next up is a product that I can't use all the time because of my own personal shit, but when I can use it, I love it. And that is the NYX Thick It Stick It Thickening Brow Mascara. So this has like fibers in it as well that kind of help build up your lashes and make them look a little bit thicker. They tint them, they add some color, everything like that. Obviously, if you guys have seen my videos before, um, you know that I don't have a ton of eyebrows. If you've never seen my videos before and you're like looking at me and you're like, those are eyebrows right there. Uh, these are drawn the fuck on if you couldn't tell. I have what's called trichotillomania. I pull at my hair and uh, my eyebrows typically take the brunt end of it. Uh, oftentimes my lashes as well, but you can never tell with my lashes because I always have big lashes on. Anyways, it's, it's, it's been worse lately. Um, <laughs> been bad lately so I haven't been able to use this because it doesn't really do much when you don't have a ton of lashes to apply them to but if you have actual lash hair it's a great product um, it does a good job at just like thickening up what lashes I have or brows we all knew what I was talking about the whole time I'm not even gonna refilm it um, it does a really good job at thickening up what brow hair I have and just adding some color and just kind of darkening them a little bit because I do have lighter eyebrows than like my hair. Never mind the fact that I dye it, but whatever. Um, it's a really good product. I enjoy it. And it's affordable, which is always nice. Next up, I have the Nabla Skin Glazing Highlights. I have Truth and I also have Privilege. First of all, the packaging on these is stunning. I love the just like clear pink acrylic I don't know why it's just something about it like aesthetically just fucking speaks to me but these highlights are so beautiful they're just like thin and just they sit on the skin so wonderfully but like they have a beautiful glow to them so I tend to use truth as more well, this one's truth right here. I tend to use truth as more of a blush topper just because obviously it's pretty deep. And then privilege is my more like go-to highlight. But again, they're so thin and they just apply so beautifully and just, mm, they're, they're just, they're delicious. I think that's the only way that I could describe them is just like they look so beautiful on the skin and just, mm, you know? I, I know that was such a beautiful explanation of it. I know I really worked hard on that one Next up I have a palette and that is the ColourPop gone matte palette I know that for most people that's probably like okay It's an all matte neutral palette like how exciting could it be but this has everything you have your warm tones your mid tones your cool tones your Lighter tones your darker tones everything in the middle. It just it has everything that I could ever need to create a beautiful neutral look and like I can pair it with my like super shocks or my cream shadows or I can do an all matte look or you know if I have just like a shimmer in another palette that I really want to use but maybe I'm not feeling the mattes that are in that palette I can pair it with this one like it has everything it's perfect blends beautifully applies beautifully the pigment is perfect ColourPop is really upped their shadow quality within the past i would say like two or three years they've they've got they've really nailed down their formula and this was one of the like shining stars of that nailed down formula like it's just all of the shades are so pigmented but just really easy to apply and blend and just sit beautifully and just it's perfect it's a perfect palette to me honestly next up let's chat about the product that i just grabbed while i was filming that video and I have only minis of them, but that's okay because I have so many lip products. But these are the Lawless Forget the Filler Plumping Lip Glosses. So I have Velvet. I have Rose Pearl. Bitten. And last but not least, I have Blushed Sand. 
So these are also plumping, not nearly as plumping as the Essence one or the Too Faced one, but these are plumping. They have a good color to them. I love the scent on them as well. They're beautifully delicious. Um, really nice little applicator. You can see it right there. It kind of hugs the lips. It's not thick or stringy or gross. It just sits really beautifully on the lips. It plumps them just enough that like it gets rid of the lines and just makes your lips look like juicy and nice, you know? Next up is another product that I am wearing on my face today and that is the e.l.f. Camo Powder Foundation. I have the shade 150C. Um, I also can play around with the shade 150 Warm. Uh, I'm kind of somewhere in the middle. Uh, but this is the shade right here. It's perfect. I have it everywhere on my face except for obviously like where my color products are and I don't have it underneath my eyes today, but like on my chin, on my nose, forehead, all that good stuff. It's a perfect powder foundation. Um, it blurs my skin beautifully. It has a beautiful amount of coverage. I apply it with just like a slightly denser brush directly over my foundation you know just pat it in and it just sits beautifully it melts into the skin once you put like a setting spray on top and it just it looks so good and it's just so blurring and smoothing and like it does a really good job at setting down your face but it's not super heavy or cakey it can get heavy or cakey depending on your application method that's why I like to use a brush um, I obviously like to use a brush with all of my powder foundations, but that is why I like to use a brush because it just applies a slightly thinner layer and you can kind of buff it in as opposed to, you know, putting it in with a sponge or with a powder puff. It's going, or velour puff, whatever. That's going to lay it down a little bit heavier. Um, and I feel like that's kind of a reason why some people don't like it is because they use like a sponge or they'll use the little included thingy. I've never used that as you can see considering it's completely clean. For me personally, a brush on my skin sets it down beautifully. I actually kind of like that that one's a little bit cooler because I have a couple foundations that are a smidge too warm. So having a, a cooler toned powder foundation really counteracts it. Um, I've, I know I've talked at length about that powder foundation so I don't want to get too heavy into it. Next up, I have the Makeup Revolution Ultra Cream Bronzer. I'm actually wearing this on my face today. I did set it down with a powder bronzer, but if you watch my palette for back Thursday, that's going to be coming up on Thursday, obviously. Um, I will, you can see me applying it on camera, but this is tonally very very similar to the NARS cream bronzer in Laguna 2 like they're very similar shades however I will say that this one is a little bit creamier a little bit more emollient it kind of definitely has kind of definitely it definitely has more of an oil base to it as opposed to the NARS one this one doesn't really set down to that same powder finish this one also has significantly more pigment to it so you need very little like I tend to use a bigger brush to apply my my cream bronzer and I will dip like the very tip of my brush in and kind of stamp 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 and then go in and diffuse it because you need so little like this was my fingertip and it's still like it's there so something to keep in mind that it is definitely a lot more pigmented this is also the lightest shade and it is it can be a little bit overpowering on my skin, so also something to keep in mind, but it does, the shade range actually went pretty deep, if I remember correctly, so it will cover a pretty wide base of shades, which is nice, affordable, smells really good too. I've never been able to pinpoint what it smells like, but there is a fragrance in here that's really nice. Next up is the NYX bear with me concealer serum it took me a while to get on this train but once i got on it i was obsessed first of all i love the fact that this is a pump but also that it's one of those types of pumps that sucks the little thing up from the bottom so you will be able to use every last little bit i love that so much but this is just such a beautiful concealer in that it's 
it's not crazy crazy high coverage um it's probably about the lowest coverage that i would go but it is just so creamy and like it sits so well underneath the eyes it's beautiful i wish that this was in a bigger container that i could wear it as a foundation honestly but it just sits so nicely underneath the eyes it doesn't get like crazy creasy or anything like that on me personally it sets well it is hydrating enough that like i have dry skin it's really hydrating enough that like it doesn't irritate anything i'm running out of descriptive words like i'm running out of adjectives which is good because I only have five products left. Next up is actually the foundation that I'm wearing today and that is the number seven Lift and Luminate Triple Action Serum Foundation. I wear the shade Warm Ivory, which is interesting because this is definitely like a slightly cooler toned foundation. Um, but this foundation is so beautiful. My only complaint is that the lid is like loose, but it's a beautiful foundation. This honestly feels like if the NYX Bear With Me Concealer Serum was in a foundation form, this is what it would be. It's like a high medium coverage. It doesn't cover perfectly, um, but it just sits so nicely on the skin and it blends so beautifully. And it's just like got this almost kind of like creamy texture to it that just looks so healthy and good and nice. This was really the year of cream bronzers and this is the Anastasia Beverly Hills cream bronzer. I have this one in the shade Sunkissed which is their lightest shade which for a portion of the year is too light for me. I will throw that out there but uh, especially during like the summer or excuse me especially during like the winter it's light enough that it works for me but definitely a little bit warmer like i said a lot lighter than my other two it blends itself that's the only way that i could describe it like you just kind of stamp it on and it's just like i'm blended like it's perfect it something about the formula is just stunning this one also kind of sets down to that almost like powder finish to it that works really nicely for longevity um again just it, it's the blend for me on that product in particular like the way it just so effortlessly applies it's just what makes it perfect next up is the tarts maracuja juicy lip plump i have here the shade peachy beige peachy beige um so this is one of those like lip click ones i'm not gonna click it up because you can't click it back down but it's is just Mm. it's like a lip gloss and a lipstick in one I will throw out there that it's sticky it has a very sheer tint of coverage to it and a ton a ton a ton of glow it smells like coconut but it feels minty on the lips which I feel like is where that like kind of plumping quality comes in beautiful product very nice uh, definitely not a product that I would recommend carrying around with you like in the summer outside like this is a stay home or stay in the air conditioner kind of product because it's very like very melty in like a good way but also in a bad way <laughs> I know that made so much sense but yeah that's the best way that I could describe it all right two more products Next up is the LYS Higher Standard Satin Matte Cream Blush. I have the shade Kindness. First of all, I just, this, the packaging, 10 out of 10. Love it, I don't know why. Just something about it is just really nice. It's a perfect little cream, bl cream blush. Satin Matte is a great way to describe it. It applies like a more emollient, cream blush but it does set down to kind of have a more matte finish which really helps with longevity and doesn't get kind of because I know when you do like a full face of cream makeup it can get like a little bit overpowering and you're like holy fuck I look oily so having something like this that's just like a little bit more satin matte it just kind of offsets a lot of that 
overpowering glow that you can get but the color is perfect it's got the perfect amount of pigment to it that just it applies beautifully this is another one of those ones that like basically blends itself like it not not as easy as the ABH cream bronzer but like still blends so easily and just applies so nicely and I love it so much and like I said I'm running out of descriptive products descriptive words so let's go ahead and wrap this up talk about the very last product <laughs> because my brain is melting last but not least I have here the Beauty Bay Brights 2.0 palette it has everything that you could ever need for a rainbow palette the pick the Jesus. The mattes are pigmented, but they still blend really, really, really easily. The shimmers, standout product, honestly. The shimmers are insane. Like, absolutely insane. They have so much shine to them, but still so much pigment. Beautiful, but like, the mattes, crazy pigmented as well. But again, everything just blends so easily and just applies so nicely and I'm struggling here. I'm kicking myself for not trying Beauty Bay's shadow formula sooner, honestly. But I'm glad that this was like my intro to it. I remember I picked it up in like June and it was part of their pride launch and they donated pro they i was like going back and forth i was like i don't need another rainbow palette but like i really want to try it but then i saw that this one the part of the proceeds or the, the profit or something like that was going to like the uk version of the trevor project like going to a uk lgbtq charity i guess um and i was like well fuck it. that's fine then i'll just go ahead and buy it you don't have to twist my arm and i'm so glad that i did it took forever to get to me but i am so glad that i purchased it it also wasn't a huge deal that it took forever to get to me because the entire two week of my shipping time uh i had covid so it wasn't like i was gonna play around with it anyway um but yes 10 out of 10 product even if you don't and i've now since tried a couple other beauty bay like shadows so i can say that across the board their shadow formula has at least in what i've tried has been consistent so even if you're looking at this and you're like i don't need all of this or i don't need it to be rainbow or something like that like i would recommend trying out any one of their palettes that interest you because the formula is just insane, especially for the price. Like it's so affordable and also so like it's such good quality. My brain has officially completely melted. So that's going to wrap up today's video. And that is going to wrap up my favorites of 2022. If you happen to see my <sighs> shot, my stash from the end of December, then you would know that I am officially on a no buy. I'm not touching new makeup for at least six months, if not possibly, probably maybe 12 months, uh, 11 months at this point now. I'm gonna do a holiday haul in December, but like, I'm gonna not buy makeup until then. Anyways, my point is, <laughs> I don't know at this point in time if I'm going to have a 2023 favorites next year because I'm not going to include a bunch of makeup that I tried in December as my 2023 favorites. Maybe I'll revamp it and it will be like the products that I reached for the most during the year throughout my no buy. I don't know. I'm thinking way too far ahead. None of you guys are even going to remember this conversation a year from now. So those were my 2022 makeup favorites. I think I pretty much covered all of my bases. I think I'm happy with everything. I don't think I missed anything. Even if I did, ship sailed now. So <laughs> comment down below and let me know what your favorite makeup product of 2022 was. I would love to know. Please subscribe if you have not already. It would mean the world to me. Like this video, ring the bell, do all the things. I hope that you guys have an awesome, awesome day, and I'll see you guys in my next one. Bye!